Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to mass update contacts within Salesforce. Now this is going to be kind of a workaround way because Salesforce in their mass updating tool does not have a way to mass update contacts. So we have to do a little bit of a workaround using Workbench and a spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and jump into contacts and I'll show you my tab. So I currently have Salesforce open. I also have Workbench open and a spreadsheet ready to go. Now, Workbench is a Salesforce adjacent tool that you can use to query in SoQL, which is Salesforce object query language. And it it sounds a lot scarier than it actually is. Once you get the hang of it, it's really, really simple. And Workbench allows us to create queries fairly simply. And then also update some records. I usually like this better than the data loader tool because in the data loader, it's really hard to update your queries. Whereas in Workbench, it is very, very simple. So currently I am in contacts and what we wanna do here, and this will work for just about any single field that you have or even multiple fields within Salesforce, you can do this multiple fields. I want to update contact owners. So let's pretend that Jane Doe is leaving our company and we want to give all of her contacts to me. So what we can see here is that Jane Doe owns Eugenia Luce. We also have Jane Doe owning the contact for Rose Gonzalez, and we just want to change those to me. I'm going to go into here and look at details, but while we're doing that, I'm going to get started with Workbench. So this is what Workbench is going to look like. I'm going to agree to the terms of service, log in, because I'm logged in with another tab, it'll automatically log me in. From here, I'm going to go and do a SQL query and find the contact object. This might take a little bit because they have all of the objects. Okay, getting close. Here we go, contact and select. Okay, so this helps us to build the circle query. We're gonna choose the fields. We can choose to sort results by and then filter resort results. So a few things that I know I want to grab here are going to be the ID of the contact. This is how Salesforce, when we update, is going to know which contact we're talking about and match the right data to the right contact. So I'm going to click that and then scroll down. I'm looking for any other ones. I'm also going to select name. You need to, I'm on a Mac, so I hit command and then name. That allows us to select more than one without selecting like the whole list in between ID and name. And then another important one is going to be owner ID. And then if we wanted to get any other information, then we would be able to do that. Maybe lead source. Let's say we had a list that we wanted to change all of like the lead source to web from phone. Or if there was some type of criteria, if you could filter down like any leads with a lead source of phone in the past month that came in through there, it was a mistake that the system made or it was a bug. Those were actually web leads. Then we would be able to filter that down and get that and update that through this way as well. Right now I'm going to filter results down by owner ID. So I'm going to grab the owner ID here, equal to, and then let's go back to Salesforce and find Jane Doe's owner ID. Up here in the URL, you're gonna see over here, almost the last one is going to be a series of 18 digits. That's gonna be the record that you're currently on. So that's Jane Doe's record ID number. That's what we're gonna be filtering down by. If you are in Salesforce Lightning, it's going to be 18 digits. If you're in Classic, it's going to be 15 digits. So if you're in Lightning, you should have no problem. But if you are in a bilingual org, then that might cause some issues later down the line. All right, I'm going to paste that. And then, so you can see down here, we have our SQL query that we are going to run. Okay, so it looks like we have 19 that are owned by Jane Doe. So what I can do is come back up here. We're gonna keep this SQL query, but instead of viewing it as a list, we're gonna view it bulk CSV. I'm gonna query that. And then I'll be able to download that as a CSV. Okay, now this is where we go into Sheets. Go to File and Import. Then I'm gonna upload here. I'm gonna drag this downloaded over here. All right. Then replace the spreadsheet, detect the separator type automatically, import data. This is all gonna work out. All right, 
now I'm just going to open up these fields a little bit more. All right, so now what we're gonna do is in the owner ID column, we're gonna replace that with my owner ID. So to get there, there are a few different ways we can go. I'm just gonna go back to, I could have gone to contacts or opportunities, but I know I own some opportunities. Go to my record and then snag that ID. And I know I'm gonna take a look at the end of it. So the beginning is always gonna be the same because the first three-ish numbers are going to tell you what kind of record it is. So every person, this is for people, every people record is going to start with 005. And then for opportunities, every opportunity is gonna start with whatever series of three numbers. Same for accounts, contacts. If we go back to our spreadsheet, you can see here the ID for contacts here is going to be 003. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to the owner ID, paste mine, get rid of that semicolon or that slash. And then I'm gonna drag down that so then it's all Q-A-Y instead of A-A. -A. Okay, and then I will title it. Contact update. And then once that is there, go to download CSV. Okay, now that we have that CSV, we can go back to Workbench. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of Workbench. And then instead of querying through SoQL, I'm gonna do an update here. Select the contact object again. All right, and now we can choose to do a single record or from file, I'm gonna do file, grab that one and next. Then it's gonna have me map. It will show you all of the different IDs, but we only had maybe four or three that we changed. I'm gonna go map fields because all these looked correct. And then check yes, confirm update. And it looks like it is completed. So 19 records. I didn't double check that that's how many we had within Salesforce. If you're doing a lot of data, then you will want to maybe run a report that you have that amount of records and double check this, those numbers match up once it's completed. Go to contacts here. And it looks like all of these contacts on this related list are now mine. If we go to all contacts, we can look for Jane Doe's name over here in the alias but i am not seeing it so it looks like it was successful that is kind of a quick way to work around the salesforce not having that mass update contacts now this does doesn't necessarily have to be just for the owner id that was just the example i took this can work for other fields and just about any field that you find within salesforce thank you so much for joining me if you like this video be sure to give it a like subscribe you can check out the salesforce courses down below in the description or on salesforceupscale.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.